Hola, this is CF Willy, not CM Punk. Welcome to another classic modern film review. Is it a sin to review this film? I don't know. I'm doing it anyways. From the classic film reviews to Kill a Mockingbird. Based on a 1960 book by Harpy Lee comes one of the most beloved films of all time with its charming characters and powerful message during the civil rights movements. This film has lasted to the test of time that is still being read in schools and considered by many as a masterful literature piece and a classic film right there with the top 100. So I know it's a sin to kill a mockingbird, but is it okay if I think this film is overrated? Ooh, you suck! Okay, I know, wait, wait. Word people, overrated does not mean bad. It means something that has been highly complimented of what it should deservingly receive. Like my overrated chart? This is a good film. Is it as perfect as I've heard many claim it to be? Not really. I have not read the book, so I'm just going to review based on what I saw in the film. The story takes place in the South about a lawyer named Atticus Finch, played by Gregory Peck, who defends in court an African-American Tom Robinson, played by Brock Peters, accused of raping a Southern woman. So let's talk about the good things in this film. One of those is the trial. One of the most powerful scenes in the whole movie when Tom Robinson and Violet, played by Colin Wilcox, are giving their own side of the story and it was nerve wracking. It was unpredictable if the court jury would follow the rule book and play fair with Tom or remain with their biasness. They both are limited in the film but give a well performed acting during their individual testimonies in the trial. I personally prefer Colin Wilcox more. But the actor who took the ball and ran as fast as he could was Gregory Peck. Awarded as best actor for this role, Gregory Peck's character is unforgettable as the lawyer who fights with all he can to defend the unjustly accused Tom. The AFI has put the Atticus Finch character in the number one spot as the best hero of all time. And I can see why. He fights for what he knows is good. Even though most of the people do not agree with him, he's calm, peaceful, does not react violently, he is a good role model as a father who protects his children from prejudice. He tries to raise them as a single father in a period of time when there was a lot of hatred and he still doesn't take advantage as he could have with his accused client, Tom. His speech in the trial is what made Atticus Finch and this movie a unforgettable experience. Evil as such, that all Negroes lie, all Negroes are basically immoral beings, all Negro men are not to be trusted around our women, all men are created equal. The speech still holds on even to this new generation, sending a message to demonize the motive to condemn an African American just because he's black. The soundtrack in this film sounds wonderful, it even sounds very modern like from the 90s instead of the 60s and it's even heartwarming to listen to. Now let's talk about what lowered this great film to just good to me. The film is 2 hours and 10 minutes long and they only focus on the theme of racism for almost 20 minutes. The film barely focuses on the primary message since it was telling another subplot that takes over the most of the entire film with the kids who were trying to discover who the mysterious Boo Rally was. Now, if I would have never heard of this book or movie and seen it without anyone telling me that this was a great film, I would not know what to make of it. I would not know what the central focus is, I would not even know who the main character is. In my first impression, I would have thought it was about the kids since they have much longer screen time than Gregory Peck. I've heard they were trying to view racism in a child's point of view, but I didn't see that in the film. They just glanced it for a few seconds, but we never see them or hear them expand their thoughts about it when they're older narrating the story. Now, I did not hate as much the subplot or the kid actors, I thought they did well as real life kids and Dustin Hoffman's stare as Boo Rally is very iconic, but if you're gonna make it about racism, make it about racism. If you're gonna make it about Southern kids embarking to a mysterious house, make it about that. It was really disappointing that it promised me something and delivered something else in return. But whenever they stayed focused, it was really good. What mostly helped this film to succeed was the right time. 
This book and film came in the 60s when prejudice against African Americans was still at the high peak of controversy, riots and chaos in the streets, especially in the South with so much hate and intolerance, which would rise up valuable players in the civil rights movements such as Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, etc. to fight this unjustifiable discrimination. To Kill a Mockingbird reflects in a period of time in which indeed was a time of black and white, especially a dark time, and it still looks like it is today. It shows our fall as humans and this film tries to remind us what the correct moral is to stop this hate so justice can be done in an effective way instead of a biased opinion. The actors in this movie are so good they made this message in the story hold so much weight that it still means something, because this hatred still continues. There is nothing wrong if you find this film perfect, maybe you saw something I did not catch up. I only wish they could have spent more time with the theme of racism and I would have liked this movie a lot. But for now, I give it a 7 out of 10 stars. Since I did not read the book, I might have missed a few details of the perspective of this story so feel free to comment to say what else am I missing so I can hopefully like it a lot better than right now. So for now, that's it for today. Ciao.